Lisa Sue, thank you so much for having us here on Overtime here at uh, the AMD campus in Austin. We're just talking about Oracle's report. Of course, we need to be careful that they always give their guidance on the call, but so much of what they're reporting is coming out of data center, which has been just a, a huge growth area for you. Today at South by Southwest, though, you were talking also about the AI PC, about the client side. So hoping to start there. Yeah, absolutely. So John, thank you for being in Austin. Uh, we're very happy to host you on our campus today. Uh, look, it's been um, a great day. I really enjoyed being at South by Southwest. It seems like everyone is in Austin this week. <laughs> Um, all the movers and shakers. And yeah, what we talked about today at, um, at the uh, keynote was really um, a bunch of different things. I mean, first of all, um, AI is um, really still at the very beginnings of what we can do in technology. Uh, we can talk a lot about the data center. I, I usually uh, start there. Uh, but I did spend some time talking about AI PCs. And I'm, I'm very excited about this continuum of AI products as you go from you know, cloud to edge to PC and really trying to get um, you know, sort of the user experience such that everybody has AI somewhere in their lives. Help me with my skepticism here though sure. on the AI PC itself because it seems like this latest boom in interest in AI and some of the economic activity came out of OpenAI's chat GPT release and investors really started to realize, okay, this is gonna be big. See it happening in the data center. But when we start talking about inferencing and the client side, I don't see my kids saying, oh, I need a new AI PC to run this new AI version of Fortnite, right? They're still asking for the graphics cards, AMD, where AMD uh, plays, uh, to do the same kind of thing as before. So do we need to see new software that's putting demands on the hardware in a new way before the AI PC gets momentum, if it does? Yeah, well, um, let me take a step back, John, and kind of tell you um, describe a little bit of how I see the market evolving. So um, true, like, you know, ChatGPT and all of these large language models have showed us that you can get access to a tremendous amount of capability uh, with um, all of the training and inferencing that you do in the cloud. Um, but it turns out that, you know, people really have a lot of personal data and the way you want, you know, you use your PC, it's actually a personal productivity tool. So what I see is that we're at the beginning of the era where we can make much, much more capable personal assistance in the PC form factor. And things like, you know, I can ask my PC, when was the last time I saw John Fort? What did we talk about? Remind me what he was interested in. Those types of things, which today I'd have to spend, you know, probably an hour looking through like all kinds of things. That's one example. Um, actually, on the South by Southwest stage today, we showed um, a, uh, a really good example of you know, doing um, you know, text to image where you could do it locally. So you don't have to connect to the cloud. You can do it right in your own um, you know, PC. And again, these are things that uh, as the technology gets better, um, I am absolutely sure that uh, everyone's going to want an AI PC. Also on stage, you're joined by Weta, you know, the really high end uh, special effects creators. Does the AI PC, to your point about text to image, really catch on with professionals first and in, in their iteration and ideas and then that filter through the way it has with so many other graphics powered capabilities? I, I, I do think that there is a, a, a thing about expert users will start first. So we actually had uh, David Connolly on stage from Weta FX. Um, actually, big congratulations to them. They won an Oscar last night for War is Over that was entirely rendered on AMD technology. So mm. we were very excited about that. But what you see is, you know, again, for whether you're a Hollywood, you know, movie studio or you're a content creator or you're just a, um, you know, sort of a regular person who has lots and lots of data, um, AI can help you sift through that, can help you use it uh, in a, a more productive way, uh, can take things that used to take, you know, days or hours and you can reduce it to, you know, minutes um, in terms of finding things, um, whether it's text to image or now you saw, you know, text to video. Uh, it's, it's really an opportunity to just become much, much more productive. And, you know, the technology that we're putting in today's PCs, um, you know, I'd like to say that we've had um, CPUs, GPUs, now we have um, you know, AI accelerators that are there just to make it much more powerful in uh, very small form factors. So now that we've talked a bit about the PC, let's broaden out because a lot of the analyst world has been abuzz for the past several weeks about this $400 billion total addressable market for AI related technology that, that you laid out. Um, again, my job to approach these things skeptically 
we just went through this pandemic period where we saw this huge surge in demand for PCs, for e-commerce, for goods, and a lot of companies said, oh, this is going to continue up and to the right, and it didn't. So how can we be sure this is, this is an exception? So, John, the way I think about AI, and uh, you know, you've heard this uh, from others, is uh, you know, AI is actually you know, the most important technology that we've seen over the last 50 years. Uh, you know, it, it's arguably the most important. And uh, when you think about what it can do uh, for enterprises, um, for you know, all of us, for uh, you know, research, for development, all of that capability, you need more compute. Now, uh, most people would say they were, they've been really surprised at just how AI has taken off over the last 12 or 14 months. Um, it is true. We've taken a technology that has been around for a while, but was frankly very difficult to use, and we've turned it into something where everybody on the planet can use AI technology, you know, because it's language-based and it's you don't have to be a programmer, you don't have to be an expert, you can be you can just ask the AI what to do. Now the truth is, um, AI is still in its infancy, so we're still at a place where we know that it will get better. Like we know that you can make these models better, we know that you can make this inference faster, we know that we can make it more accessible. So I do see a place where we're going to see tremendous growth over the next um, you know, three, four, five years. Uh, we are super excited about the partnerships that we have in AI, uh, in the cloud, and you know, really trying to deliver all of that infrastructure, um, as well as in the edge and, and in the client form factors. Speaking of partnerships, one of those is with Microsoft, which has been using AMD chips in the cloud. I like to look at the calendar. We marked 10 years since Satya Nadella was named CEO of Microsoft back in February. It's going to be 10 years since you were named CEO of AMD in October. And, you know, I was also looking at the stock chart. We, we were around three bucks a share on AMD when you came in, just shy of 200 today. It's pretty good. Also to note about those two tenures, data center has been key. You know, Satya Nadella's you know, Azure and, and work there, that, that transition from server and tools uh, into that, into cloud. And then your work, I think when you came in, 90% of AMD revenues were in PC. In fiscal 23, less than half, okay? So why was data center for both of these companies in retrospect so important over the last decade? Well, I, I will say, um, you know, it's been a great 10 years. Uh, it feels like it's, it's not been that long. But um, one of the things that's most important with every company is to decide what you're best at. And uh, you're absolutely right, AMD has always been um, a very good company. Uh, but frankly, uh, we needed to decide what we were best at. And you know, back, back then, the bet was high performance computing. Uh, when uh, it may not have been the sexiest part of uh, the business, um, uh, you know, we, I fundamentally believe that high performance computing was going to be the most important technology trend for us going forward for the next five to 10 years. Uh, I think we've seen that. You know, we've seen a data center become much, much more important. You've seen cloud become more important. Um, it's really difficult to build these chips. You know, we talk about you know, sort of new Zen 4 and Zen 5 cores. We talk about chiplet technologies. We talk about you know, our, our MI300, our latest AI chip has 150 billion transistors. So these are hard technologies. Uh, but once you put them together, you realize how much they really drive um, you know, sort of a computing overall. So yes, uh, it's, uh, look, we, we love PCs. Um, you know, I can, I can talk to you all day about that. But we also see a world where high performance technology really um, is uh, the most important ingredient for solving some of the world's most important problems. And frankly, working with some of the most important partners um, out there, and uh, so I'm, I'm very you know, pleased with you know, the progress that we've made. And data center is a place where you, know, you need the biggest iron, and it's hard to build um, you know, these, uh, these systems. So since you frame it that way, I have to ask you, what is your least popular current important bet? Yeah, <laughs> since everybody else is caught up on high performance computing. Well, the, the beauty of our portfolio now is um, it's a very broad portfolio. Uh, you know, we are, we are in the largest data centers. We are in the client uh, devices. Uh, we also have a very broad embedded portfolio. So, uh, you know, I'm super uh, happy with the, the uh, acquisition of Xilinx. We just passed the two-year anniversary where we brought in um, an incredible embedded portfolio, 6,000 new customers. Uh, we're in the Mars rover. I didn't say it's my least favorite. We're in the Mars rover. We're in so lots I'm not of cars. your least favorite. I'm saying your most <laughs> underestimated piece of your portfolio strategically? I think the, 
the most underestimated piece, John, is how all of these pieces come together. So it is not about just what you do in the data center or just what you do at the edge or what you do in the PC. It's the fact that uh, we are one of the very few companies that have all of the pieces. So we have all of the compute engines that you need uh, to optimize for your application. And I don't know that people really understand that. They don't understand ne necessarily yet how you know, cloud influences client. That's going to become a lot clearer over the next um, you know, several years. I I'm very excited by that, by the way, because um, when you think about uh, where technology is going, um, as, as much as you know, the largest data centers in the world are, are filled with um, these uh, you know, high performance computing chips, um, you realize that there are so many other places, and if we can get these systems uh, really um, integrated uh, synergistically, and that's why when you ask me, you're a skeptic about AI PCs, I, I would love to talk to you um, a year from now and, and see how you feel about it, because I, I, I feel really that you know, this is probably one of the most important inflection points um, for the PC form factor, and this is how people are going to experience um, you know, AI um, at a personal level. You talk about vertical integration, it makes me think of Supermicro which is a company that you've known well for a long time, but they were like a, a specialty muscle car maker. And now, in part because of AI, they've gone mainstream. And a lot of people are wondering, is this high-performance computing wave changing the overall demand, mass market demand for hardware, where performance and that kind of integration that they're doing, and it sounds like you're talking about for AMD in a different plane, is just going to be mainstream? Well, we love the partnerships that we have. Um, you know, Supermicro is a great partner. Dell is a great partner. You know, Lenovo, HP Enterprise. Uh, we work with all of these guys. But I think what's different in, with computing today is uh, there is a need for lots of different types of solutions. So uh, as long, you know, as you think about uh, the hardware solutions, it's not just one size fits all. And um, the fact is, uh, you know, people are willing to invest ahead of the curve in AI. Um, you know, when you looked, you know, four or five years ago, yes, infrastructure was important, but now like AI is essential. Like every boardroom is talking about how you use um, AI. Every nation state is talking about how you use AI. And so people are willing to invest ahead of the curve. And you know, our job is uh, frankly to make sure that you know, there's uh, more supply, more, more supply out there, <laughs> uh, the, um, the opportunity to work closely with our partners to give you lots of different solutions depending on what you're trying to do. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good time to be in computing. Well, you are, you're having a good time here in Austin. So thanks for having me here uh, on your campus here to talk about it, Lisa. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, John.